You know video games, right? Those things, they're quite fun, aren't they? They're quite cool. Well, what if I told you that one day when you were randomly on holiday in your birth city, you know, just, just for a few nights you're visiting, and lo and behold, your childhood museum, the National Museum no less, has a goddamn video game exhibition on. Hundreds of playable games and arcade machines and crazy stuff like that. Don't tell me you wouldn't go, right? That's what I did. It's the, uh, where's the, this is the museum. Uh, here's the entrance bit. It's called Game On. Very smart. <laughs> Very well titled title. It's at the National Museum of Scotland in the city of Edinburgh. For some reason, apparently, it's the world's largest interactive video game museum. Which basically just means we're sort of a museum for video games, but we're mostly just you, you bring your kids here to give them something to play with. It was 11 quid entry, pretty good value, you stay for like 2 hours, uh, they do have 100 playable games. But uh, I just want to share the experience, document it, so to say, because there was some cool stuff there. Uh, there was also a lot of really stupid things there, uh, but still. Alright, so that's that's the room. That's the shop. You can buy you can buy merch there. I didn't because I I like having money. I quite need money. So that's the front entrance. Yeah, so it was basically just a huge room full of video games. Sort of half museum, but mostly just interactive with some little like uh, you just you know, just interact with the displays and the games and there's some little Occasional bits of information, nothing too crazy, you know, but So let's see we got we got Pong. We got like the original 70s Pong was over here some like old Computer kind of really really early looking arcade game They had like 70s Pong. Yeah, they had like old Had like an old vintage computer and a typewriter, you know my favorite gaming device That's a very blurry Daytona too. Uh, that's another, that's a virtual boy that wasn't working. <laughs> I just don't, I think they just didn't have power in the batteries. Uh, nothing was coming out here sadly. Because I would have used this boy. I would have absolutely used that thing. So yeah. Uh, there's just all the, f the things, the factoids. Oh, they had Puckman. Yeah, look, it says Puckman <laughs> before they changed it to Pac-Man. Pretty funny. I didn't actually know they manufactured any that said Puck Man, but yeah. The Space Invaders unit that looks like a massive fly. That one's pretty awesome. A uh, Fairchild. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Some other old consoles. I'm not sure. Is that a Magnavox? It's a brown. It's got the brown box. Very fun. A lot of old computers here, because in Britain we do kind of prefer. There you go. There's a nice shot of the old Pong console there. There's Pong again. There's a dude at Space Invaders. Some cool old drawings from the design of Space Invaders. Some promotional stuff, um, art, promotional art there. It's Puck Man. <laughs> it's beautiful, right? Oh, the Negcon, yeah, for um, PS1. Kind of designed just for um, Ridge Racer and racing games because it only has the two triggers. I kind of really want one because this thing feels really nice to turn it. That whole turning thing in the middle is really sensitive, it's really precise feeling, very cool. But with only two triggers, uh, it's pretty much only useful for old racing games on PS1, but it's still very cool. They had like the Net Yorose PS1, they had this dude, the other weird, ra one of the other weird wheel controllers, it was Ridge Racer. They had a yeah, they had a Tetris set up on the the Super Game Boy with this weird Super Game Boy controller that I didn't know was a thing. Kind of cool. It had buttons for like changing the color of the screen and you know all the Super Game Boy settings. So they had a PC Engine hooked up to the the CD. So actually, I think my first time seeing one of these in person, which was really cool. I've always sort of wanted a PC Engine. Playing R Zone, you know, nothing crazy. I would have liked it if they had a CD game running. Uh, the controller <laughs> didn't actually seem to work when I first was looking at it. It was working later though. Same with the Amiga here actually. They had lemmings going. This mouse just did not work straight up. It's a nice feeling mouse and I have one of these at the uh, 
the Amiga Mini comes with a mouse kind of like that, so... Pretty nice chunky plasticky old mouse, you know? They had like a Dreamcast set up here. No Saturn! They only had one Saturn set. I'll get to that later. Uh, they had a Magnavox 2, or the Philips G7000 we call it. A bunch of other like old... Uh, I was playing on the G7000. It's cool, right? That all altered 2600. They had a Virtua Fighter, oh hell yeah. I've actually played Virtua Fighter in other places as well. Some were the only arcade I know in existence used to have Virtua Fighter, and now it doesn't. And I'm almost tempted to say <laughs> it just got taken up by this exhibit. Pretty good fun. You'd come over though and it'd be set in two player mode because someone else was using it with someone. So I didn't really want to just sit around for, for like two minutes for the games to time out. So that was kind of a shame, you know. That Famicom, you know, that's Contra set up, you know. Nice to see the Famicom controller there. Spectrum. Spectrum is like our big, one of our big PCs here in Britain, you know. Funky, funky controller. More, more consoles. See, a lot of the stuff, um, this was running like Halo 2, I think, or like more... There were so many modern games in this exhibit, I'll get to it in a while. The Commodore, I don't remember what it was running, but nothing too exciting. The displays are nice, their glass cabinets did look really classy, you know, in such a dark room. There's a nice shot of Daytona too. I only really got one shot of it and it was hardly for even like a minute, because it was so busy. You know, I should have really gone at a different time. Uh... And they had a big section for Rockstar games, because, you know, Scotland and Rockstar. Shout out to Oni down here. <laughs> I don't really care about Rockstar, I don't care about the modern stuff. This! I care about this, this this really gets my beans frying. But yeah, I, I do not really care for Rockstar. They had an MSX, that was cool, and the MSX uh, controller. Because, you know, it's a PC, it doesn't really have like an official controller, but it has this cool little joy card thing by Hudson Soft. It's got a nice plasticky NES controller feel, a bit more clicky and plasticky than the NES though. I was playing some kind of rough <laughs> MSX Castlevania. Still pretty cool though, you know. Prince of Poesia on Mega Drive was running. They just had like two DS's set up here with like Luigi's Mansion, which was kind of weird. I get, there's a lot more modern stuff than I expected. There's a good old Asteroids unit, that was pretty fun. I love these old, really metallic buttons these these units can have. Some Dig Dug. Nice, good old, simple Dig Dug, you know, can't go wrong. The, uh, the Azumanga, the Azumanga Puzzle Bobble, I love that. Oh, I wish I could have spent more time with Azumanga Puzzle Bobble. Someone else was wanting a go on it and they took ages though. Uh, Galaxian? Not bad, I don't think I actually played that one. Missile Command. Missile Command was cool because you played with a huge trackball and these metal controllers, like you're actually using like military equipment. <laughs> it feels really cool. I love me some Missile Command, hell yeah. The tiny, oh yeah, the tiny chair for the tiny cabinet, you gotta love that, right? The Azumanga Puzzle Bobble, what an honour. Th some of the machines weren't working, like this, I think this is just another Space Invaders unit here. Isn't working. That's fair. Got more Pac-Man. Azuma. I really did like the the, the moss. Azuma. Uh, the Azumanga moss machine. Centipede's kind of fun. And this golf game next to it. You played with a trackball. You played Centipede with a trackball as well, actually, which was kind of fun. There was. They had some VR going. Very funny next to the Virtual Boy. But I'm not a big VR guy to be honest. It kind of makes me motion sick. Yeah, they had a lot of PS5 set up, weirdly. I was expecting a lot more older stuff, um, which was kind of a shame. I, I didn't really care about the modern games, to be honest. Uh, they had SimCity. They had goddamn SimCity on Super Nintendo set up here. Like, who is going to play SimCity in, like, a public area? In, like, a sort of come here, come come up for a minute, play a game for a quick minute, you know? SimCity is a game you don't really play like that, right? So it's kind of a weird choice. True. Uh, yeah, they had a lot of like PS4, just PS4, PS5 games. A lot of PCs set up, which wasn't really too interesting. A nice Virtua Fighter set up though. That trackball golf game, that was really good fun actually. Playing golf 
Yeah, and you like roll the trackball to hit the the golf ball. Very fun. I mean, they're looking like set here, you know. A lot of blurry photos, pardon me. Oh, this was cool. This shmup. It just has like a really unassuming cabinet, but like a really high octane shmup. And the Tron game. That Tron game went hard, dude. Yeah, they've had Gravity Rush on PS4 here. <laughs> they had a whole display of Angry Birds merch, which I... Why? <laughs> why is that there? That's dumb. They had uh, Pitfall going. They, they, they had like lights above the displays to sort of show you what was there, which is kind of cool. In my opinion, adventure games, and like they had text-based stuff, slow-paced games have no place in like an arcade setting. Especially when you're, it's like a public area and you're all grappling for the controls, you know, you're all waiting for your turn. Half of the games, the problem with this place was that there were some games like this that no one ever played. First time getting to use one of these. Very fun, felt very weird to control something like a top-down racer with a, 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 like a paddle controller. But it actually controlled really sleek, it was really nice. But the problem was like... People will stand at one game, because one game is famous and cool and eye-catching, and there's just games that um, people just don't care about and don't bother playing, you know? Here's some cool art, I guess, from Game Freak? Cool. Oh, this is some actual con- this is some actual, like, official- you can see it's a proper illustration of, like, Sonic's redesign. That was so cool, dude. I flipped when I saw that. I'm pretty sure this is the actual drawing as well. It's awesome. Yeah, courtesy of Sonic Team Stroke Sega. Naoto Oshima. So you're seeing the proper, the man himself. This is the trend. This was the classic to Adventure Sonic. I f that was awesome seeing that the actual sketch, dude. That was really cool. And they just had Sonic One on <laughs> on on um, Mega Collection going for some reason. Of all things to put on GameCube, you didn't put this on Mega Drive? Like, I don't get that. Why didn't you have it, this running on Mega Drive if you wanted to show off Sonic, you know? And again, Tomb Raider. No one cared, no one was going to play Tomb Raiders. A few people were coming by to it, but it was always free. You had some cool Lara Croft merch there, nice. You have some modern game. Well, this was cool, this was like, um, accessible controllers. Very fun. Look at these, Look, these are crazy. For like people who can't actually use like a regular game controller. These things are really cool. I tried giving it a go and I was like, I have no idea what I meant to do really. Um, because I couldn't work out which, what was used to control like movement and stuff. Um, but these are so cool, man. I imagine playing rhythm games on this, this boy. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, like there was just games that people weren't interested. Like why is Final Fantasy VII here? I get the historical value, but this is not the place to play Final Fantasy VII, you know, it's, it's, it's like a, it's an interactive museum venue, it's, it's like, oh, that, that, that makes no sense here, because it's something you sit down and play for a long time, it's not just like an arcadey pick up and have a quick go kind of thing. And a lot of these games as well were like indie games, like modern indie, which is fair, a lot of them were locally made, as in, you know, made in Scotland, so I get why you'd show them off, but... I'll be honest, I don't think anyone would come to see something like that. I certainly... These were always free. These were all the modern indie stuff and hardly anyone was ever here. You know, they really... The way they set it up is really badly balanced, I think. Because no one's going to play those things. Yeah, it's split... <laughs> it just had Splatoon on Wii U. So I guess if you've never held a Wii U gamepad, there you go. They had like some multiplayer... The multiplayer setup was kind of fun. They had Smash Bros going here, GameCube. They had some FPS here. Four screens dedicated to that. They had sat. They had like a six Saturn controllers and Bomberman, and no one was playing it. It was tragic. I stood there for like five minutes, waiting for someone to come over to play Bo Saturn Bomberman with me, but no one did. Yeah, first time actually holding one of these um, Model Two controllers, right? A Mark Two, I want to say, with the Mark One Saturn controllers. They feel good. They had like modern Street Fighter and three six. A lot of three sixty and PS Four stuff. Yeah, Dreamcast here, which was very nice to see Dreamcast. Uh, fighting, you see, this works. In, a, in this setting, a fighting game, you pick up and play quickly. That's perfect for a setting like this, you know, but... What is it? This is that NES fighting game, right? I forget what it's called. Yeah, like, 
I don't even know what this game is, bruh. Like, who's gonna sit, sit, sit there and play that some sort of long, slow puzzle platformer in a setting like this, right? Unless it's on some crazy console or a crazy controller. Like these track and field controllers for NES track and field. They felt awesome. They were so spring loaded, dude. They felt amazing. Yeah, this saw no, I don't think I saw a single person touch this football game here. You know, it was such a waste of one of the display cases. Because not having having display cases that no one's going to means that there's just gonna be more people going to the buns that are really, really busy, you know. And that just kind of makes it that just means that people who come here to really play, like, I really wanted to play Daytona 2, and I barely got to, because it was just, there was always kids there, and always other people, and I, I'm just there on my own, so I don't want to be a an, a, an asshole man-child who just, you know, interrupts a family having a day out, you know, it was really not a great space for that, I think, um, I mean, Monkey Ball, okay, Monkey Ball on GameCube, kind of nice, um, again, Vip Ribbon, Vip Ribbon, awesome game, absolutely worth playing, um, but the thing is, is that you need, it's a very esoteric game, you need to sit there and you need to pay attention to the how to play, so you know what to press, and how that rhythm game works, so I, I, again, I don't think this works in a setting like this, same with, this game was, <laughs> this one wasn't even working, the one hooked up to the PC, yeah they had like just like a Game Boy Advance just hooked up, they had a weird bunch of like cool old like um those handheld ar arcade LCD things. They were kind of cool, you know. I liked these. These were co this was cool to see. I wish they had these set up, dude. But why wasn't there a Vita set out? Um, look at all these stuff. This is awesome. This is proper vintage handheld stuff. Tiger Games, dude. They only had like one of these set out and one of these, and that was all you got to interact with for the old LCD stuff. Look, they got a Lynx and a Game Gear. Why weren't these set out somewhere, dude? You know? Yeah, look, DS, 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 GBA, GBA. It's not that interesting. I, I don't think. I, I, I don't know who's gonna come here to sit down and play, try and play like Luigi's Mansion um, in this setting. It doesn't work in this setting, you know? Some weird big mouse controller, I don't know what this is from, from some weird PC game. It was kind of interesting looking, kind of a fun little puzzle platformer thing. They had a, they had a U-Draw, they had a goddamn U-Draw tablet set up, and the, the weird Atari keyboard controller. I had no idea how this game works, but it was kind of interesting, at least. Yeah, bro, U-Draw. For real, just U-Draw. That thing is worth, like, nothing. But it's here, set up alongside like actual valuable collectibles like uh you know like a p like the pc engine cd and of course they had a section on minecraft and minecraft was playable and minecraft was playable here as well because you know nothing against minecraft but i can play minecraft at home see this was cool i've never used one of these old sit down arcade table things it was running like a space invaders you like sit there you like you just have a little dial under the table and you the buttons are like under the table so it doesn't even look like you're playing a game it's really comfy you really just get to relax and sort of it, it looks slightly suspicious but pretty good honestly yeah they had like a bloody nes adventure game set up now getting to use the dog bone controller was unique that was fun but this why was this here? Was it some Scottish guy who made the game? Cool, I mean that's great and all, but I don't care about this the fact it's Scottish. I care about playing weird fun old games and this is just some adv some like awkward um old point and click NES game and no one played it cuz no one wants to play an NES game in like a sort of interactive arcade setting, right? Oh god, they had Beatles Rock Band, of course. They had another rock band set up as well, I think. They had um, Just Dance, you see Just Dance there as well. They had E.T. I respect the E.T. repping, because I quite like E.T. and I like that they had little like museum display buttons to like correspond to the console's uh, face button things. I respect the E.T. repping, not gonna lie. They had Parappa the Rapper, that was kind of fun. They had Rez as well, I think I'll get to that later. There's the Guitar Hero. They had Dragon's Lair concept art. That's pretty cool, right? They had the Wii version go in. <laughs> the only version you can probably play, I would assume. Yeah, there were so many setups that were just like random PC, like modern indie PC stuff, and I just don't get why that's here. What's the museum value in that? 
you know. I, I, you, I just don't get their choice of games here at all, honestly. Only half of them, I'd say, were worth really playing. They had Doom set up here, but it was on like a modern PC keyboard, which is kind of annoying. You know, I mean, this the venue looks, the room looked lovely. It was so dusky and cavernous, and all the little lights on the displays were awesome. Shout out to Rez over there. Um, but yeah, man. It was just kind of like a half, half done, I'd say, honestly. The, why? <laughs> why Angry Birds? Why? Yeah, the Daytona 2 is awesome when I did get to play it for a little bit, but it just felt very awkward having to just like sort of stand there and I had to just sort of force my way in. I, it was not a comfortable experience being here, honestly. This is not a good venue to go on your own. If I had someone else with me, uh, I'd probably feel a lot better about it, but that's the problem of the, the way they've arranged the games here is that there's always games free and always games that are crowded and you really need to balance that or people are just going to be left waiting awkwardly like me but thank god I had trackball golf it felt really cool to flick that trackball and see like the dude flick the the golf stick very cool the Tron game was awesome you kind of have like a rotary here for turning the gun angle you move a guy around and you shoot that felt really got damn good the Tron game very cool graphics big big fan of this one Quite usually it was free as well, so I kind of played that one quite a few times. Oh yeah, this one, there's just a text game here that just didn't work. <laughs> it always crashed or something, it just was not wanting to work. It's really dumb. On J- oh, yeah, Tempest 2000, oh hell yeah dude, I got my name on that high scoreboard bro. Again, Ocarina of Time, why? There was like Ocarina of Time, Mario 64, I think they had Donkey Kong 64 set up as well, and I just don't- think they are games they're like adventure games right platformers they're slow platformers um i don't think that's a good setup for an, an, an area like this tempest 2000 perfect absolutely i genuinely think i've spent more time here playing tempest 2000 than anything else just because one it's perfect for the setting two it was usually free because people don't care about atari jaguar sadly i, I think it's so cool but i just yeah, I, I love that one. I'm so I'm very glad that was there. A great comfort to play Tempest 2000. Got my name on that board, yo. It was awesome. Breakout. The breakout was cool, but the paddles weren't working. They were all twitchy, you know, like uh, total mess. Very unplayable. <laughs> someone just named. There was Pokemon just going there. Someone just named the Pokemon B Bukashka. <laughs> very nice. And shout out to classic chubby Pikachu as well. You're the best. Of course they had a Highland song, you know, that, that modern indie game. That's cool. I've nothing against it being there. I just don't want to play it there. Oh, the res. The res, the trans vibrator wasn't working, so you just played res without it. Still very cool. I've never played res before. I didn't realize how Panzer Dragoon it was, but very good fun. Yeah, there was always a line for Daytona, and it was always like a family, so you really didn't feel like if you're just one person on your own, you really weren't comfortable waiting to like look at that machine you know which is fine i don't want to interrupt a family there's the the msx controller that was pretty cool shout out to missile command again my beloved love you <laughs> yeah true so it's just geo just geo jump scare it felt nice, it was a nice build, nice, honestly probably my fit. I would have probably spent more time playing Azumanga Puzzle Bobble, it was great fun, I do love Puzzle Bobble, I do love Azumanga. I would have spent, I would have gladly spent the whole two hours playing this honestly, it was kind of the highlight I think. But there were people behind me who were waiting, so after two minutes I just kind of gave it up, I didn't want to keep people waiting, uh, but they were there for like 30 minutes which was kind of rude honestly because you know, no one else got a shot after that, I don't think. Yeah, that, it'd be like that though, I don't I don't really mind. I can play most of these games at home, you know. I was really disappointed that they didn't have like... Like, I I don't want to be the, the bragging Andy who wastes all his money on game consoles. I this, oh, this was the display? This was the display from the like LCD handheld arcade things. Yeah, like that, that was cool. Yeah, I mean... 
I was hoping, like, would, could we get, like, maybe, like, an FM Towns Marty? Uh, 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 even, like, a Pippin? Uh, N64 DD? Like, there, there was nothing that crazy here. The, the rarest, coolest console I think they had was probably the PC Engine CD. And I could very easily get one of those. Anyone could. They're not rare. They're not they're not that crazy hard to come by online. Yeah, like their their selection was just so weird. And there was nothing that rare besides the arcade games. In terms of consoles, yeah, this was like the rarest thing they had. It was a real disappointment. I was hoping they might have like a like a Imagine you walk in and there's a bloody FM Towns Marty, dude, and I get to play a Towns Marty. That'd be awesome. Like, there are so many rare, crazy consoles that they could have gotten. I mean, they they have a museum budget to work with, dude. They have the National Museum's budget to work with. But the rarest consoles they had there were, like, the MSX, the uh, the PC Engine Mini. A uh, PC Engine CD, sorry. Yeah, so that's the end of it. I'm just ranting because it was kind of a disappointment. Their choice of games kind of made it so that there was no balance and there was always machines busy always machines that people weren't using, you know? Nothing was that rare. I mean, I don't want to brag, but I'm just going to say it. I have rarer consoles, all right? I have, I own a Pippin. I have a Fairchild that works. I don't know why they didn't have it on display. Interactive. They had the Fairchild behind the glass, you know? Um, I have Vet, there was no Vetrex. There was no Atari 7800. There was no, like, um, there was nothing Neo Geo. I was hoping for Neo Geo stuff, dude. There was absolutely no Neo Geo. Um, barely anything on like the Coleco. There was no Coleco or Intellivision. Um, there wasn't like they didn't even have like a, they had the Saturn set up for Bomberman, but that was it for Saturn. They had two Dreamcast things out. They had so much Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, NES. I get why. You know, but it's not what, it's not, I don't think that's museum quality, that's not museum worthy. Museum worthy would be like a Pippin, or a Towns Mar FM Towns Marty, or Atari Jaguar CD, that's extreme, all those things are very museum worthy. I own more museum worthy consoles than the National Museum of Scotland bothered to get for their video game exhibition. Like, I'm not bragging, because... There's nothing to brag about spending money, it's very easy. It just depends how little care for your money and time you have, you know, but um, it was just a disappointment, honestly. It was just the fact that there was half of these games were never played because they just didn't work in this environment. They just didn't make sense having as like a quick pick up and play kind of experience. Half, so everyone was playing the same things. Coming on your own, which I, I was on my own, it made it very awkward, it made it feel like I couldn't really play anything without just finding what was quiet and, and, and not being used by anyone. Yeah, it just, I would have done so much different if I had, an, if it was me, you know. Um, I feel like this was set up by people who don't get, or who aren't as obsessed with weird old consoles as I am. This is the historical side and what's relevant and what's important, but what's also a failure and what's also overlooked is also the history. And that needs preservation and, and uh, there should be a place where people can experience that. I was just hoping for, like, to play a console I've never played or will never get to play. I'll probably never get to play an FM Tums Marty and I was really hoping maybe they'll have one. It's possible, right? It's a museum. It's the biggest interactive video game display in the world that they're claiming. Whatever that means, on whatever technicality they're going on, but I just thought it was really disappointing, honestly. Yeah. Their, their arcade machines, most of them are the old 80s stuff, like your Dig Dugs, your classics, right? Your Dig Dugs, Centipedes, Galagas. But any barcade, any NQ64 is going to have those. You know, they're, they're, they're not that interesting. They're just... So many weird choices in this exhibit, honestly. It was cool, the atmosphere was lovely. What I did get to play, I did have a lot of fun with. But there was a lot of downtime, there was a lot of time just looking around for, well, what can I do now? Because all of the things that are cool and I'm interested in are taken up because half the machines are just running like SimCity or some modern indie game that people don't really come to a museum to check out, you know? 
the arcade games were kind of too close together as well. There wasn't really space to walk around that area. All the modern games just weren't interesting. I just don't... I just... That wasn't what I was coming for, you know. Some of the things weren't working. They had like weird choices where we'll play Sonic 1 via GameCube on Mega Collection and not on a Mega Drive. They just had a weird mix of this isn't historical enough and obscure enough and much as much of a relic to be interesting and it's also just not you've just not gone in for the fun stuff enough to make it worth playing everything you know it was just a mess honestly i loved it and i'm criticizing it because i love the concept and i want to see this done better because it's so it's such a cool atmosphere look at this you walk in and there's a row of consoles running all kinds of games of a huge variety all these lights up top and the darkness of it. Oh, it's so atmospheric. It's beautiful in there. But the, the, the choices, the variety is good, but you need to choose something that fits that variety and set it up in a way that allows it, that makes it appealing to play, you know. I didn't actually read these because <laughs> I was kind of pressed for time and just wanted to play stuff and I was going frantic and foaming at the mouth. That's why I just photographed all these so I can just read them whenever, you know. Call me obsessive, uh, I prefer archivist, it sounds nicer. But yeah, it was fun, I had a good time. It's worth the 11 quid. If anyone goes to Edinburgh in the next few months, um, it is in the National Museum of Scotland, quite easy to find, right in the centre of town. Free entry to the museum itself, I mean it's my favourite museum, I love it there, and only 11 quid. If you buy the membership to the museum, which is only £33, one time payment, £55 I think actually, you can bring another person along and get to visit as many times as you want. And I might do that, because I really want to come back here when it's later on and they open it up for um, adults only in like the evenings because that would be perfect dude because then I'd actually get to finally like use the Daytona cabinet which I really really wanted to do it looked so good yeah it was good I'm glad I went there I'm glad I supported them I'm glad they got my money because I've never actually donated to this museum that I've been going to for years of my life so that felt good but yeah I, there's just so much I would do differently but if, it, if I came at a different time, I would surely enjoy it more, just because the good games would be free. It's just the fact that it shouldn't they shouldn't have designed it to allow for there to be cues for the quote-unquote good games. I don't mean good games, I mean games that are appealing to play in this situation, in this scenario, in this place, you know. Yeah, a lot of it's cool to see all this. The, I, I get the angle of it. They're, they're promoting a lot of a lot of games from Scotland, you know. Uh, but again, that's not. I don't think anyone. I don't come here for. I'm Scottish, and I don't care about the Scottish games. I'm sorry, they're nice, but <laughs> I I, I want to come here for the video games, be them from Scotland or not, you know. Why was Sonic One on GameCube? <laughs> I like the GameCube controller. I actually have a third-party knockoff GameCube controller, so that's my first time using the proper GameCube controller. Because I'm not, a, I'm not a big GameCube guy, to be honest. I'm not really a GameCube fan. Yeah, the setups were lovely. It looked nice in here. It was so cool to see all those games running, but just weird choices of games. Not enough space. Not enough balance between what people would want to look at, so there's always the machines that are in use. I'm repeating myself, but it's just because I'm looking at it and I feel oh too very strong about this matter. Anyway, yeah, that's I've I'm ranted out. I've I've had enough of a rant now. I'm satisfied. That is my experience of the shout out Azu manga uh, puzzle bobble, the highlight, the best thing, best girl, the reason that the best thing here. Re reason I came here? Not really. The reason was Daytona 2, but I didn't get to play Daytona 2, like, at all. So yeah, there you go. That's the Game On exhibit that's currently on. Still ongoing till November, I believe, at the National Museum of Scotland. £11 entry. Here's a free advertising, free advertising, I guess, to make up for all the bitching and complaining I've done. But, yeah. It's cool. I liked it there. I do things differently. But if I went there at a different time, different day, a bit quieter, I could enjoy being there on my own and actually playing the games. I still had a great time though. Thank you to the museum. 
Uh, thank you for, I guess, letting me take all these foes. I hope people don't mind. I hope this is legal. Alright, we're back at the shop. Okay, cool. Yep, that's my review of the Game On exhibition at the National Museum of Scotland. Cool. I just wanted to rant, to be honest. <laughs> but thanks anyway. Uh, good, good and bye. Bye-bye.